Welcome back. In the last lecture, we talked about permutations and combinations. Permutations were situations where the order matters. And examples of these were license plates, passwords, rearranging people in a line for a photograph, uh, picking people for special jobs, for example, picking people for president, vice president, secretary. For permutations, the way you deal with permutations is you first figure out how many blanks you need. And then for each blank, you count how many options you have for each blank. And that's how you deal with permutations. Combinations are situations where the order does not matter. A common example of this was uh, picking a team of five people, where you're, you don't have different jobs for special jobs for the five people. You're just picking a team of five people. And for combinations, the final answer is going to be something choose something. The total number of items you have to choose from, and then how many you're choosing. Today, I'm going to add two new, new situations. The first one is called permutations with lookalikes. Situation here is how many different ways can you rearrange the letters of the word Mississippi? So we're talking about rearrangement. So if I swap, say, the M and the I, I get something different. So the order here does matter, which is why it's called a permutation. Now, the difference between this permutation and a regular permutation is that we have things that look alike here. Okay, notice that I have I's that are repeated. I have one, two, three, four I's. I have S's that are repeated, and I have P's here that are repeated. Now, even though if I swap the M and the I, that counts as two different things because it looks different, right? But because I have lookalikes, if I swap two of the lookalikes, for example, if I swap the two S's, I don't get anything new, right? It looks exactly the same. If I take the two S's and swap them, you, get, you don't get anything new. So we have to take into account those situations. The way you deal with permutations with lookalikes is you start off the same way as a regular permutation. So figure out how many blanks you need. So here I'm rearranging the letters of the word Mississippi, which means I should end up with the same number of characters total. So let's count how many characters are in Mississippi. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 letters total. I should have 11 blanks. For each blank, count how many options you have. For the first blank, I should have all of the characters um, as an option. So there's 11 of them. And then I'm rearranging. So whatever letter character I picked for the first blank, I'm not going to use again, which means for the second blank, I should be down to 10. And then for the same reason, I should be down to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, now, if this were, were a regular permutation, you would be done. But because we have lookalikes, I now have to divide by the lookalikes. Okay? So look for the letters that are repeated. So what's repeated? I have I's that are repeated. Okay? Count how many I's you have. One, two, three, four. Okay? So I have four I's that are, that are repeated. You're going to divide by four factorial. And that's for the four eyes. What else is repeated? I have S's that are repeated. So count how many S's you have. One, two, three, four. Four S's. So another four factorial. And that's for the four S's. What else is repeated? I have P's that are repeated, so there's two of them, another two factorial, and that's for the two P's. And that's it. That's how you deal with permutations with lookalikes. So on your lab, you can just enter your answer in just like this. So a fraction on top, 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over... 4 factorial, so 4 exclamation mark times 4 exclamation mark times 4 exclamation mark. So 
you can you can leave it like that. Now, if you wanted a final answer, let me show you how to enter it into a calculator to get a final answer. So the calculator that I'm recommending you use is called a Desmos Scientific Calculator. You can either Google Desmos Scientific Calculator or uh, I put a link at the beginning of each question on the lab. So it's a fraction. I'm going to click on the fraction button, which is all the way on the right, the A over B. Okay, up top, it's going to be 11 times 10. 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, up top. On the bottom, 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial. So on the bottom, 4 exclamation mark times 4 exclamation mark times 2 exclamation mark. And that's your final answer. 34,650. So you don't have to find a final answer. Um, you could if you want. Uh, but you can also leave it as uh, this big fraction. All right. The next new situation we'll talk about is called multi, I'm going to call multi-choose. Example here is I need to pack a bag for a business trip. My closet contains 13 shirts, 10 pants, and 15 ties. I would like to bring four shirts, four pants, and six ties. How many ways can I pack for my trip? So how would I pick these items uh, to pack. I'm going to first pick my shirts, right? I'm going to pick my four shirts. Does the order matter um, when I pick these four shirts? No, it doesn't because I'm going to pick the four shirts and then I'm just going to throw it into the suitcase. So it doesn't matter which shirt I pick first, which one I pick second and third and fourth. So this is similar to a combination, but the difference is a regular combination, you're just choosing uh, one time, right? You're choosing several items just one time. Here, I have to choose multiple times. I have to choose some shirts and then choose some pants and then choose some ties. So this is going to be multiple combinations. So how, how would I do this? I would first pick my shirts. I have 13 shirts total and I'm picking four of them. So this is going to be 13 choose four. That takes care of my shirts. And then I'm gonna choose my pants. I have 15 pants, I have 10 pants total. And then I'm choosing four. That's gonna be 10 choose four. And then my ties, I have 15 ties total. I'm choosing six. That's gonna be 15 choose six. So multi-choose your choosing a couple items, and then you're choosing a couple more items, and then you're choosing a couple more items. And in each of these choosings, the order that you're choosing, the order that you're picking the items does not matter. And then from here, you're gonna to go to your calculator and uh, calculate each of these combinations separately. So go back to my decimal scientific calculator. Um, to, uh, to enter combinations into the calculator, you're gonna first click on FUNC function that should bring up this menu and then click on the NCR at the bottom. And then you type in the total, comma, how many you're choosing. So for the first one, 13 choose four is going to be 13 comma four. That's 715. The second combination, 10 choose four. So another, click on NCR again, 10 comma four. That's 210. For the last one, 15 choose 6, click on NCR again, that's going to be 15 comma 6, 5005. And the way you're going to enter this into your calc or into the, the lab is 715 times 210 times 5005. If you want to, you can also multiply that out and get a final, uh, single final answer. All right, let's try some examples. The hard part about the examples in this, uh, in this section is that the first thing you need to do is decide which of these four situations you're in. Is it a regular permutation, regular combination, permutation with lookalikes, or is it a multi-choose? 
Example one, you have a book collection containing 29 books. You want to give away 11 books to your cousin. How many ways uh, can you pick the 11 books to give away? The first thing I would ask myself is, when you're picking these 11 books, does the order matter? Does it matter which book you pick first, which one you pick second, which one you pick third, and so on? Probably not. Right? You're picking 11 books, you're probably putting it in a box and then just giving it to your cousin. So it doesn't matter which book you pick first. So if it doesn't matter, if the order does not matter, it's going to be one of the combinations. Either a regular combination or a multi-combination or multi-choose. And the question is, are you choosing a couple things and then choosing a couple more things and then choosing a couple more things? Or are you just choosing one time? For this one, you're just choosing one time. You're just choosing 11 books, and then you're done. So this is going to be a regular combination. Which means that final answer is going to be something choose something. Okay, uh, How many books total? 29. And then how many are you choosing? 11. Go to your calculator. Uh, the way you enter combination is click on FUNC function and then click on NCR and then you're going to type in the total comma how many you're choosing so 29 comma 11 big number 3 4 5 9 7 2 9 0 34,597,290 ways you can pick the 11 books to give your cousin. All right, example two. Credit cards and debit cards often require a PIN number consisting of four digits. So right off the bat, PIN number is similar to a password, similar to license plates. So definitely the order is going to matter here. Okay, and now the question is, the two, uh, the two situations where the order does matter is permutations, regular permutations, or permutations with lookalikes. Now, the advice I have here is that the only situation where it's a permutation with lookalikes is pretty much this situation here, where you're rearranging uh, a word. In this, in this example, we're not rearranging a word, right? We're creating a, a PIN number, creating a password. Uh, this one's going to be a regular permutation. Which means I need to first figure out how many blanks I need. So I want a pin number that has four digits. So one, two, three, four. Okay, these are going to be digits. And then what else What else do I want? Sam wants to create a pin number that starts with 743. Okay, so this first one needs to be 743. So let's go ahead and fill out the first blank. First blank, I need to be seven, four, or three. How many options do I have? Just three, right? One, two, three. Now, for the rest, I need to, to also keep in mind whether repetitions are allowed or repetitions are not allowed. It does say here that repetitions are allowed. which means for the other blanks, I can use the full number of options for digits. So digits uh, are zero through nine. So zero through nine, there's 10, 10 options there. Okay, because I'm allowed to repeat, I should have the full number of options there. So that's 10 for the same reason, 10 for the same reason, 10. So enter three times 10 times 10 times 10. Example three. License plates in a certain state follow the format, four letters followed by four digits. Right off the bat, license plates is uh, one that we've seen mul multiple times. Uh, this is a regular permutation. Okay, first figure out how many blanks you need. Four letters. Letter, 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 letter followed by three digits. And what else is important here? Uh, letters D, O, and Q are not allowed, okay? And then repetitions are not allowed. So repetitions 
are not allowed. Okay, letters. How many options do I have? So normally letters will be A through Z, which is 26. Um, in this example, I'm giving you a restriction that you're not allowed to use these three letters, which now, uh, what's the total number of options I have? A through Z is 26. If I remove three, so 26 minus three is 23. So I have 23 options for letter. Now, because I'm not allowed to repeat, Whatever letter I chose for the first blank, I can't use again, which means I don't have the full 23 anymore. I'm down to 22. And then for the same reason, I'm down to 21, and then I'm down to 20. Digits, uh, 0 through 9, that's 10. And then because I'm not allowed to repeat, okay, for the next digit, I do have to reduce it by 1. So I need to reduce it by to nine by one to nine and then I need to reduce again to eight example four Miguel would like to create a password by rearranging his phone number 916-555-1167 how many different passwords can he create passwords order does matter so this is either a regular permutation or a permutation with lookalikes so the way it's written here you're rearranging this quote-unquote word but the word here just has uh, numbers instead of letters. So this is definitely a permutation with lookalikes because we definitely have repeated uh, characters there. So this is a permutation with lookalikes. And the way you deal with permutations with lookalikes is first start off by figuring out how many blanks you need. We're rearranging um, this phone number, so I should end up with the same number of uh, numbers or digits. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I should have 10 blanks total. For the first blank, how many options do I have? So how many characters here or how many digits here? There's 10 of them. And then I'm rearranging, so whatever... Uh, digit I picked for the first blank, I'm not going to use again, which means I'm down to 9, and then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, I do have lookalikes here, right, because I do see a 5 that's repeated three times, I think a 1 that repeats, and then maybe some other ones. So I do need to divide by the lookalikes. So what's uh, what's repeated? I think the ones repeat it. So how many ones are there? There's one, two, three. So there's three ones, which means I need to divide by three factorial. And that was for the three ones. What else is repeated? I see fives. So one, two, three. I think there's five threes or five, three fives, sorry. Three fives, so I need to divide by three factorial. And that's for three fives. And then do I have anything else that's repeated? I think I have a six that's repeated twice. Okay, so for that six, uh, it's repeated two times, so I need a two factorial. And that's for the two sixes. Okay, so uh, be careful here. The six is repeated, but you don't divide by six factorial. You divide by how many of the sixes you have. So there's two factorial because there's two sixes, uh, three factorial because there's three fives. And you're not dividing by five factorial. You're dividing by three factorial because the the five appears three times. Example five, 14 students from Cosumnes River College and 18 students from Yuba College attend a new student orientation. At the end of the event, eight students will be chosen to receive $20 gift, $20 gift certificates from uh, to Jamba Juice. Part A, how many ways can the eight students be selected? Okay, so you're choosing eight students. Uh, first thing I would probably ask myself is, does the order matter when you're choosing these eight students? 
they're all receiving $20 gift certificates. So it doesn't really matter who gets picked first or second or third because they're all getting the same prize. Uh, order does not matter. Okay. Question is, is it a regular combination or is it a multi-choose? Part A, I'm just choosing eight students. I'm just choosing one time. Regular combination. How many uh, students total do I have to choose from? There's 14 students from CRC, 18 students from Yuba for a total of what's 14 plus 18. So 32 students total. And I'm choosing eight. All right, let's go to your calculator. Click on FUNC. Click on NCR, the total, which is 32, comma, how many you're choosing? Eight. All right, big number, um, 105, 18, 300. That's 10,518,300. Part B, how many ways can eight students be selected so that all eight are from Yuba College students, or oh, from Yuba College. So the only difference here is that part A, okay, I want eight students, but no specification. So you're choosing eight from, from everybody, which is 32. If I want just Yuba College students, I'm just gonna choose eight, but from the 18 Yuba College students. So for part B, if I want all Yuba College students, I'm just gonna choose from the group from Yuba, which means 18. So 18, choose eight. Okay, so I'm, I'm only choosing eight, but I'm focusing on just the Yuba College students. So the total is now 18, and I'm choosing eight from that 18. NCR, total, 18, comma, eight. 43,758. Part C. How many ways can eight students be selected so that there are exactly three Cosumnes River College students? Okay, so this one is a tricky one, but look for look for the the, the keyword exactly three. So I want exactly three from CRC. What does that mean? That means I want three from CRC, and the rest from Yuba. Right, so exactly three from CRC means I want three CRC and then the rest from Yuba. How many is the rest? I want eight students total, so three from CRC, the rest from Yuba, which means five from Yuba, right, because I want eight students total. So really, when I say exactly three students from CRC, I mean three from CRC, five from Yuba. So what you're doing here is you're choosing three from CRC and then five from Yuba. So this part C is really a multi-choose, right? Because I'm choosing a couple and then I'm choosing some more. This is a multi-choose. Okay, for the CRC, I'm gonna choose three students from the CRC group, which is, there's 14 CRC. So this is going to be 14 choose 3. And then I'm going to choose 5 from the Yuba group. Uh, Yuba, there's 18 students. So this is going to be 18 choose 5. Do each of these uh, combinations. So NCR. First one, 14 comma 3. 364. The second one, NCR again, uh, 18 comma 5, 8, 5, 6, 8. Okay, and then your final answer is going to be 364 times 8, 5, 6, 8. Example 6. The math club at CRC is organizing a fundraising event. The club, which has a total of 18 members, needs to form groups for various tasks. There needs to be a group of three people to sell tickets, a group of five people to help set up for the event, and a group of four people to help clean up after the event. 
How many ways can these groups be formed? Think about how you would pick these, these people. Wouldn't you just pick three people and then pick five people and then pick four people? This sounds like a multi-choose. And even more, when you're picking these three people to sell tickets, does it matter uh, who gets picked first, second, or third to sell tickets? No, it doesn't, right? They all have the same job, so you're just picking a team of three people to sell tickets, a team of five people to help set up, and then a team of four people. So this is really a multi-choose. Okay, so first thing we need to do is pick the three people to sell tickets. So you're choosing three people from a total of how many? There's 18 members total, so from a total of 18. And then you're picking the five people to help set up from a total of how many? So here you have to be careful, right? We don't actually have the 18 total anymore because we already picked three people to sell tickets. So how many people do we have left? 18 minus 3. That's 15. Okay, so we picked three people already to sell tickets. So we don't have the full 18 anymore. We have 15 people left. And then from the people left, we're picking five people to help set up. And then you're going to pick the four people to help clean up. And then for the same reason, um, how many people total that are left? So when we were picking the uh, the five people to help set up, right? There was 15 people left. We chose five of them to set up. How many people are left? So 15 minus the five, there's 10 people left. Okay, now go to your calculator and do each of these combinations. All right, click on FUNC function, click on NCR, 18 choose three. That's gonna be NCR 18 comma three. 816. Next, 15 choose 5. NCR again. 15 comma 5. 3003. 10 choose 4. NCR. 10 comma 4. 210. Okay, the way you're going to enter this is 816 times 3003 times 210. All right, so one thing I want to point out, okay, this is like the third multi choose we did, we've done so far. Right, why was it that here we had to reduce, whereas we didn't talk about this on the other two examples? So, in the other two examples, so in our previous example, where we were talking about the CRC students and the Yuba College students. We chose three CRC students, and then we chose five Yuba College students. So we didn't have to do any reduction here because we're first choosing CRC students, right, from a from the CRC group. And then for the next choosing, we're actually choosing from a different group, right? We're choosing from the 18 Yuba College students. So you're choosing, and then you're choosing from a different group. Even in our example that we did on the first page, where I was choosing shirts, pants, and ties, right? I'm choosing pants, or I'm choosing shirts, which is one group, and then I'm choosing four pants, but that's from a different group. And then I'm choosing ties from a different group. So those two examples that we talked about prior to the, this one, it was a multi-choose, but in each choosing, we were choosing from a different uh, group or category. This one, right, there's only one group. There's the 18 uh, members total group. So. Here, we're actually choosing from the 18, and then we're choosing from the same group again, and then we're choosing from the same group again. So when that happens, you do have to, to reduce. Next up, example 7. The tune Twinkle Twinkle Little Star has seven notes in its first line. C, C, G, G, A, A, G. Assume that all seven notes are held for the same length of time. If the notes are rearranged at random, how many different melodies could be composed? Okay, so we're talking about music here, so it, it does matter what note you play first and what note you, you play second. So this is definitely a permutation. I do see some letters repeated, so this is going to be a permutation with uh, lookalikes. All 
right, so first figure out uh, how many blanks you need to just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is just a rearrangement of C, C, G, G, A, A, G. So it's a rearrangement of a, a word. Okay. All right, so for the first blank, how many options do we have? I think we counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven options. And then we're rearranging. So whatever I picked for the first one, I can't use again. So I'm down to six. And then five, four, three, two, one. And then because we do have um, lookalikes here, I do have to divide by the lookalikes. Okay, so what's repeated? The C is repeated. I see a C that appears two times. Okay, so I need a two factorial. Okay, that's for the two C's. What else is repeated? The G, the G appears one, two, three times. So I need a three factorial. That's for the three G's. And then the A also repeats and it repeats two times. So I need a two factorial for the two A's. Example eight, a family consisting of four children, 10 adults have reserved a row of seats at a theater. The four children need to sit in the middle with five adults on either side. How many ways can the family seat themselves? So this is a, a rearrangement of people in a line for a photograph, but in this case it's for a seating at a theater. So rearrangement of people in a line, it's gonna be a, a permutation. Um, we're talking about people here, so you can't really have lookalikes. So this is definitely just a regular permutation. Okay, figure out how many uh, blanks you need. Um, I have four children in the middle. So let me put those in first. These are children, 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 children. And then I need five adults on either side. Four children in the middle, five adults on either side. Let me take care of the children first. How many options do I have for children? There's four children total, so I have four options. We're talking about people here, so um, it's understood that you're not allowed to repeat, right? Because I can't have the same person sit in the same place, uh, in two, two different places. So for the next child, I should be down to three, and then down to two, and then down to one. Adults, okay? For the first adult here, how many adults do I have total? I have 10, 10 adults. Okay, first blank, I should have 10 options. And then for the same reason, we're talking about people here, so there's it's understood that no repetitions are allowed. For the next adult, I should be down to nine. And then eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Example nine, when ordering the largest family pack of fire wings, you can choose 10 different flavors. And here are the flavors. Part A, how many different ways can you order a family pack at fire wings? In other words, how many ways can you choose the 10 different flavors? Does it matter what order you choose the 10 flavors? Does it matter what you choose first, second, third, 10th? Probably not, right? So this is definitely going to be either a combination, regular combination, or a multi-choose. For part A here, you're just choosing the 10. So this is a regular combination. What choose what? We're definitely choosing 10 from a total of how many wing flavors? So let's count how many flavors are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 wing flavors total, and we're choosing 10. Okay, on my calculator, click on FUNC, NCR, 
21 choose 10, it's going to be 21 comma 10. 352, 716. Okay, next up, how many ways can you order a family pack at Fire Wings if you don't like any of the classic wing flavors? So in part A, we're choosing 10 from everything. Part B, I don't like the classic wing flavors, so I'm basically just gonna choose 10 from these. Okay, so this is gonna be another regular combination. I'm choosing 10, but since I don't like the classic, I'm just going to choose from, from these options. So how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14, choose 10. Okay, my calculator, NCR, 14, 10, 1001. Part C, how many ways can you order a family pack at Fire Wings if you want exactly two dry rub wing flavors? All right, so here, the key word I'm looking at here is exactly two. This is going to be similar to the other example that we did with the CRC students and Yuba students where I asked, how many different ways can you uh, pick exactly, what was it, three? Exactly three CRC students. So here, exactly two dry rub, and what that means is I want two dry rub and the rest um, not dry rub. All right, non, non dry rub. Okay, so Exactly two dry rub means I want two dry rub and then the rest not dry rub. So how, how many is the rest? How many, how many flavors do I want total? I still want 10 flavors total, right? I want two dry rub, the rest, the rest is going to be eight, right? Because I want uh, 10 total. So I want two dry rub and then eight non dry rub. So this is basically I want to choose two from the dry rub. And then I want to choose eight from the non-dry rub. This is a multi-choose. Okay, so two from the dry rub. Uh, how many dry rubs do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven choose two. That gives me my two dry rub. And then the rest, which is eight. I'm going to choose eight from the non-dry rubs. So what is not dry rub? That's going to be the classics and the fusion. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 non-dry rub. All right, now just do each of those combinations on your calculator. The first one, 7 choose 2. So NCR, 7 comma 2. That's 21. 14 choose 8. NCR, 14, 8, 3003. Okay, and then the way you enter it is 21 times 3003. Example 10. Ryu wants an identification number code consisting of four letters followed by three digits. So already, um, this is like a password, so this is a permutation. Uh, we're not rearranging anything, so this is a regular permutation. How many blanks do I need? Four letters. Three digits. And then I want some more stuff. He wants the code to start with H, P, or I. Okay, so he wants H, P, I here. And in with 7, 9, 2, or 1. So ends with 7, 9, 
two, or one. Okay, go through, uh, count how many options you have for each blank. So if you have restrictions here, I want to start with the restricted blanks first. First blank, I want H, P, or I. That's three options. Last blank, seven, nine, two, or one. That's four options. And then now the letter. Now, I also need to pay attention to whether I'm allowed to repeat or not, right? Because if I'm not allowed to repeat, I have to remember to, to reduce. Okay, letters. The letter part can have repetitions. The digit part cannot have repetitions. Okay, so the letter part, I'm allowed repetitions, so I can use the full number of options. Uh, letters A through Z, that's 26. Uh, I'm allowed to repeat, so I can use the full options, 26, 26. The digit part cannot have repetitions, okay? So for this digit, uh, 0 to 9, normally that would be 10, but I have to keep in mind that um, I use one digit already, so I should be down to, to 9. And then for the same reason, down to 8. Alright, so that's a wrap on our counting unit. Have a great day. Talk to you later.